some projects in mind for specific types of pottery. Beautiful. That looks like a stripe of bead. I think it's tin clay? Oh, I'm not sure. Another thing that looks like a bead is this beautiful piece of pipe stem that in, in its age has formed like a perfect bead shape and it's stripy. Well that is a Thames made bead. <laughs> That's brilliant, I love that. And there's sort of another one. It's not as stripy or as perfectly bead shaped. But again, it's a beautiful colour. Hmm, this might be a... Might have to make some necklaces with Thames formed beads. With a tin glaze. Quite like to collect some more of this today. Ginger beer, maybe, or it's blacking pot. First, very recognizable find. Oh, my goodness, that's a beautiful mother of pearl button. And the sun has gone in just as I'm trying to look how beautiful that is. I'm not even sure if it's mother of pearl or if it's a no, it is. What an excellent find. Look like the end of a very big handle. A cooking pot, probably post medieval. Everything you touch by the Tem just has age to it. It's absolutely incredible. Everywhere you look, there's just some bit of history. Look here, just here, this beautiful fragment of broken clay pipe. It would have been absolutely beautiful. And who smoked that? It's just absolutely everywhere. That's a nice bit of tin glaze. Like a circle. I don't know if this has got a little man on it or something. I don't know, but I think I've got to move because the boat's coming. Today feels like it might be about the pottery. Look. Some more tin glaze, I believe. And it's beautiful. Yeah, on the train, Mum did say she wanted to find a piece of tin glaze with a picture. So let's see if we can do that today. This is a beautiful bit of tin glaze. That really is. Strangely, I said I really wanted a bit of tin glaze today with like figures or something on it. Getting closer. That looks like it could be something. Ooh. <laughs> oh my goodness. I think that might be a bone games piece. I think that's a bone games piece. Because you um it's not one of the bone discs we usually find. London is very loud, by the way. Um sorry about that. Um because it's not got a hole all the way through. Oh wow. That's incredible. I really miss the tens. So I'm I'm not sure how old this is. How old this could be. I'm not sure how you would it's a Bones Games piece! 
this. Wow, that's amazing. Wow, that is really It's lovely, cool. isn't it? And it's been really like worked around the edge. Yeah, which, yeah, it could be any any age, couldn't it? That's the thing. Well, did use things like they that, did, though. yeah. Just need some research, but it's beautiful, isn't it? This is something I want to find today. It's pretty pedestrian, but I have a very good art. Well, you'll have seen already my willow, deconstructed willow plate. Now I want to make a deconstructed. Lots of other different plates, really. All the other different sorts of pottery you can find. So, this is for our slipwear one, which I think is going to look amazing with all the different slipwear. So this is what I'm looking for. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Can you see? I hope it's not broken. This might be a bucket list find. Hmm? This might be a bucket list find. Can oh, you really? see it? Seriously. Oh. Gosh, please don't be broken. Please don't be broken. It really stands out, <gasps> doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh my goodness. That is so beautiful. That's a bead and a half. It's got to be a trade bead. I imagine here. I mean, that is certainly what it looks like. I mean, it could, again, it could be any edge though. Oh my gosh. That's beautiful. Oh, it's like Millie really Fall glass, right? Uh-huh. Uh, what's Maureen, it? Uh, what's it? Let me see. No, it's still got stone inside it. Um, I'm kind of trying to remember how you remember. It doesn't look. It's not. It's got glass through it's the middle. Something hasn't about it? white. Yeah. It, yeah. It's yes. It's good. Uh, the, oh, whoa. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> tiny. Oh no. Just. Oh no. But as we've come over, I've just picked up the base of a tiny Roman, Roman pot. pot. No and again, I don't. Though. Again, it might have a fingerprint on it. Let me see. It looks kind of similar. Yeah, it, it does. Okay. Yeah, it does. Wow. Okay. But <laughs> um, yeah, it's got cobalt blue glass. We I've seen them before where they're just this, and that's the more like sort of modern 1920s ones. But this one has just like pure blue cobalt glass mixed in with it, sort of been smushed together. That's got to be a trade bead, right? Could be. An African Venetian I mean, trade bead. It's decorative enough. Even, it, it's absolutely beautiful. It is a stunning bead. I think that's probably my favourite bead I've ever found. Probably the oldest. Uh -huh. Oh my word. And it's, yeah, it's sort of very crudely made. You know, it doesn't look like it's been made as, like, it's not a cane bead. It's not been cut off. It's been... It made look like it's um, wound. Wound like either, the... no. It looks like it was made as a single bead, I think. Oh my gosh. <sighs> wow, keep it safe. Keep I it really safe, missed please. the Thames. Would you like to put it in the, the box? Yes, please. Oh my god. <gasps> oh my Glaze. Might be the back of a child's shoe, look like a shoe plate, possibly. I'm collecting the old beautiful iridescent glass and I've been saying this for a long time but now I'm back. I am going to do it. This piece is beautiful, look at the colours, stunning. Two pins. Bit of something. Ball's tooth. Okay, what is that? Where is it? Oh, oh my goodness. What is that? A bead. A beautiful bead. No way. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Can I see that? Wow, that's like a heart. Yes, 
looks like a strawberry. It looks like an orange strawberry. Oh my word. Okay. I've never had a bead day on the Dems. How old do you think it is? I don't know, it could be really old. It's beautiful and it's orange and it's heart slash strawberry shaped. Do you think that's modern or old? It's a safety pin, right? Is it an old safety pin? Oh, it feels like an old safety pin. Oh, it looks Ooh. old. Oh. That's old. That I is think. old. How, how, when was the safety pin invented? I don't know, I think there's a bit of researching to be done. Yeah. There. You know, it could be from like the 30s or the 40s or it's definitely got older. Pin. It does, yeah. It's incredibly light as well. Ooh. I wonder when this, I can Google it right now, just to find out when the safety pin was invented. That's very cool. Ball's tooth. <gasps> the Ow, pen. first pin. Oh my goodness. Is it a tape? Yes, it's a lace tape and it's been in the Anne Anna room department. Yeah, it's because little Thames gilded. Wow. Hooray. Is that what a very thin piece of typeface it is? I've been for a long time. That is possibly the tiniest piece of typeface I've ever found. I believe it is a H. It's the tiniest H, or is it a B? I think it's a tiny B. Look, Mum, look how tiny this B is, this <laughs> typeface. Look how incredibly tiny. That would have been for like a newspaper or something. It's minuscule, tiny book or a label. Oh wow, look at our tiny thing collection growing. First pit, well, one and a half bin. And the sun's gone in, just as I'm trying to show you two tiny finds. Oh, I wonder if there are any more. I thought that was a doll's leg. What is that? So I thought it was a doll's leg and then I thought it was a shell and now that I've picked it up My word, what is that made out of? And what is it? It doesn't feel like it's, I mean it's not hollow, it's solid and the end doesn't necessarily look that Oh my, is that natural or is it made? Is it like a piece of like coral? My word, I have no idea what that is. I'll ask mum, but whatever it is, it's absolutely beautiful. What's it made out of? Is it is it like some sort of sea thing? But it does, it's, but it's solid, it's not hollow. I don't know, no idea. It's beautiful though, isn't it? Yeah. Mystery find. It's quite a pretty piece of, is that Bartman? Or is it just? Oh, 
Oh, no, so I've been close. To that That's like the outer edge of the medallion. It's very beautiful. That is the most completed piece of clay pipe I've seen today. But we don't need it, so I'll leave it. See if someone else comes along. Okay. Okay, this might not seem exciting to um, everyone, but this is quite exciting to me because I think this is the first, oh, maybe the second, the first on the Thames. But obviously you can see that there are a lot of terracotta tiles here and pipe stems. But look, that is a mix of the both and that is a terracotta pipe stem. It's such a wonderful colour. You know, and I have not found one on the Thames before. I think we might have one long piece of terracotta pipe stem. But terracotta pipes are very rare. And that is a beautifully worn piece of terracotta pipe stem. I think this is some beautiful, freshly sort of smashed agate. That I'm thinking maybe we should put in our rock tumbler. Because I imagine that would be beautiful, polished. And there was some really iridescent glass too. The tiniest piece of tin glaze. That would make a beautiful little tiny pendant. Can you see glistening on the camera? It's so incredibly bright. glass and a very thick handle that oh the glass almost has it has two thumb things there. Yeah I think there are two little fingerprints that made this handle. It could be Roman quite thick though, it looks Roman, but the thickness is throwing me off a bit. I think, like, this isn't something we've really done much research into, but I think this is some very, very old glass. It's sort of yellow beautifully iridescent again but I don't know it just it feels very very old and looks doesn't look like any glass I've really found before <sighs> yeah I have to ask mum I think she knows a little bit more about it than me a pin one of those amazing bent pins I'm keeping the glass in my hand until I reach mum because I'm terrified of it breaking. I think that's another pin. Yes. Oh. I don't know what it is about the pins, but I just absolutely love finding them. Nice piece of iridescent Is glass. it that really old glass? It's sort of almost layered, isn't it? If you look at the side. Wow. It's almost, is that. Is it? See? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I have no idea. It, you know. Could be Roman. It could be like Roman glass, right? <laughs> could be. But it's absolutely beautiful. It is. I've not found any glass like it ever before. And it is see through. It's almost layered glass. That's always a, a welcome sight to see. Wow. It's so white. Ha <laughs> ha. A pipe bowl. <laughs> really didn't think we were going to find one today. There one is. Wow. It's been broken very neatly. 
but it might just have been worn down. Let's go see. It is, isn't it? Oh my word, it, but wow, look. That is an excellent pipe. Wow. They've been really well washed here. Very that's an older one. That is older. And it's smaller because tobacco would have been more expensive. Wow, okay. It's a pipe it's spot. By the, by the steps. steps. Oh, crazy. That's such a beautiful pipe. The iridescent glass heaven in this bit. This is the place to come. And there's a pipe. Oh, <laughs> it's, oh no, it's a stone. But there's a nice bit. A nice blue bit. You just look across, it's all just old glass. Mm. It's obviously the lace shape day for me. Hey. It's the second one. And nothing else. Well, I've not found a single lace shape. It's not focusing. Wow, that's like a you can see the woundness on it really well, can't you? Yeah. Wow, that's an amazing view. Because you can see it from here, it does like It's a good pin. Put my bead on it. on and sort of I think it's just part of it's, it that's like not broken that's the end it's like mm. it's like a it looks electrical end. or something yeah, yeah. some tight face I wonder what letter it is I think it's a tea oh it's tiny a tiny tea tea or It's a pin loop for all the pins we've been finding today. This would have held together Aww. like bales of pins. So yeah, like a pin loop. Nice. A tiny tile. Sugar. I <laughs> just picked this up because I thought it was just a random piece of metal. Oh and the day I've had. Oh my oh goodness. My you need to turn around so it's in the light. Oh my <laughs> gosh, this is, it's a day of bucket list finds. <laughs> Hold that. Okay. Push the bell. <gasps> oh my <gasps> Oh my oh, goodness, Mom. what is it all over it? It's a hammered coin. Oh my gosh, who is it? <gasps> <laughs> they need to go in the light. A uh, a hammered coin. <laughs> we just to see which thing it is. Two to rose. Have you ever found one before? No. That's amazing. <laughs> to see what it, so it's wow. got a brown, enormous weed also, but it's a Tudor rose. Well, I've never found anything. I mean, this lovely lady over here showed me about... All the pins, pins yeah. The pins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're so all the over here, yeah. yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> oh That's my out. goodness. Wow. Have you found one before? Nope. <laughs> Not very good at coins. Um, You've found all sorts of things. Well, one of my bucket list finds a, uh, uh, -oh, a a Venetian trade bead. It's got writing on all over it. Is that that's a hammered coin, isn't it? I don't know. Um, I don't know. It's, it's very flat. Possibly one of the best things I've ever found. I yeah. know we say that a lot, no. but yes, it is. <laughs> I think it's a rose farthing. I think it's a rose farthing. 
I think it's a rose farthing hammered coin. Oh, I mean. <laughs> <sighs> Mum, that's the one of the best things we've ever found. And I have found absolutely buckets. nothing. <laughs> we both had buckets, right? I mean, you've just found a rose farthing. <laughs> oh my god! Okay, I think my luck may be changing after the rose farthing. Look at that beautiful buckle. It still moves. Really beautiful piece of slipwear. Ooh. Okay, we're supposed to be leaving, but we found this incredible patch of metal. So many, and there's a corset fastener. What Ooh. else is here? Yeah, I've got a um, what's it, a popper for my popper fastening. <laughs> Edge of a hammered coin. Oh, I can see! Yeah. No way! Oh, it's just the writing. Oh. That's not fair. <laughs> you find a complete one and I find the edge. edge of one. This typeface says, or I assume it's typeface, so it says. It says 8 times 24. Or 8. I don't think it's 8x24 because the x is so much smaller. So that's unusual. I think that's letter press, but I can't see what letter is because it's so tiny. Nick Kate. Look at that pin. Look at the colour on it. It's absolutely stunning. I've seen a silver one. It's beautiful. I think that's another one. <laughs> another lead press, but I can't see. Well, I didn't get it because it's too small. <laughs> Are they? Maybe not typeface. Well, they look, they look like the typeface, but they don't have anything. Oh. <laughs> They've got the little rocks, so they... Maybe they're spaces. Maybe they're spaces? I've never thought of that. Yeah, there has to be spaces. These must be space marks, then. Because, look, they've got the... This one's definitely, it's got the little cross on it. That's my space marks, that's amazing. <laughs> and the pin, look how beautiful that pin is though. It's crazy. Look at this piece of glass. The colours on the glass here are just insane. funny how such a tiny box can have so many things that we've got such excitement from. Small haul today with my pipes. An amazing one. This is a Charles I hammered rose farthing in circulation between 1636 and 1649. Charles I was beheaded for treason on January 30th, 1649, at the end of the English Civil War, between the parliamentarians, Oliver Cromwell supporters, and the royalists, those loyal to the king. The Latin on the coin translates as Charles by the grace of God, of Great Britain, and on the reverse it says France and Ireland King. To solve the counterfeit problem, a new sole patent was issued at £100 a year to Lord Maltravers, demonetising all the previous issues. Each rose farthing has a small plug of brass to deter counterfeiting. Privy marks were also used to deter counterfeiting. 80% of rose farthings found today have crescent crescent privy marks. Ours, however, is mullet mullet, which seems to be considerably rarer. Our farthing is a single arch type a Maltravers Rose Farthing Type 4. A farthing was worth one quarter of a penny, the smallest denomination coin at the time.
A penny in the 1640s was equivalent to about a loaf of bread or a cheap cheese. So we think a farthing is, wasn't worth very much at all. It was maybe a pint of beer. And to qualify, beer wasn't quite the same in those days as it was today. It was sort of like the drinking water because they couldn't really drink the water because it was very poisonous. So everybody drank beer, so beer was quite cheap. To be honest, how anyone kept hold of this coin is quite hard to believe, really, because it's so small and so tiny, and I'm not quite sure how I saw it on the foreshore. These beads were known as trade, agri, or slave beads. They were important in trade between Europe and Africa, and they were made in Europe, mainly in Venice, Bohemia, and the Netherlands. And they were popular because glass making wasn't common in Africa at the time. These beads were produced according to demand, so they, the demand could vary from region to region, and that resulted in thousands of different designs. And one design which was particularly popular was the millifor, or thousand flowers design, which is what our bead is. And it reinvented an ancient technique from Western Asia to produce colourful beads formed of small cross-sections of multicoloured canes fused together or embedded into a matrix. The millifor beads were made from the early 16th century to the close of the 18th century for trade purposes, but they had a revival in the early 20th century. It's been estimated that over 100,000 different Venetian glass trade bead designs were commissioned in Murano during that 200-year period, each with their own colour variation. So most of the bead output was destined for Africa and the ships used to be loaded with beads as ballast and they would take them to Africa and they would return with spices, ivory, gold and palm oil. Um, this trade unfortunately took a more sinister nature because the price of African gold became less competitive when it started being compared to gold from America. So the rulers of Ghana, Benin and the Ivory Coast were encouraged to start supplying a human cargo to provide workforces for the colonial powers. So although this bead is absolutely beautiful, it has a very dark history and it's a history that is important to remember. Hello. So that was our trip. First trip back to the Thames in about nine months, yeah, I think. Long time. And the sheer excitement we felt on the train was immeasurable, and it did not disappoint. No, it really didn't. Yeah. Um, you will have seen in the film we already talked about some of the history of our of our finds, but we both found bucket list finds, as in literally they were written in our little bucket list document we made that you've seen before. So. Mum, what is your favourite find? Uh, yeah, it's my uh, farthing, rose farthing. It's, it's so small. How? I don't... I was quite excited. <laughs> I apologise for that. People on the foreshore, there was a few people around. There were quite they? a few people around and we'd already spoken to a couple of them. Like, um, I met a wonderful woman that had been um, self-isolating for 18 months and it was her first trip back to the foreshore. And she was very excited. She'd found some really beautiful beads. And there was another young man who you hear his voice in the film who was there. And yeah, everyone turned to look <laughs> because to look mum just started <laughs> exclaiming very loudly. And then as soon as I walked over and saw it, I then started to as well. And so and that's why... Going, what did you find? What did you find? Yeah, that's why the, the footage is a bit disjointed because we had to stop and talk to all the other <laughs> wonderful mudlarks to explain why we were... Well, the so lady, very lady excited. Said, she said she'd found three in her lifetime. She, she'd found well, in five five years of mudlarking. Yeah. She'd found three, and she was because everyone was like, "You found one before." And we were <laughs> not even close to finding one before. Well, we're not good at coins. Are we're we? not good at coins, but we've always wanted to find a coin. Yeah, uh, hammered coin. The hammered was on our list, and the, the fact that it's slightly rare as well. Yes, as you heard about the privy marks, and yeah, and it's quite funny because then afterwards, I found this tiny fragment of another rose farthing. And that one's got the crescent on it, isn't it? And this one's got a crescent privy, privy mark, so this one is more common. So I'm glad that mine was the one that, that was is broken. broken. 
you know, it's not even like it was used as change because it was the smallest denominator. No, yeah. This is just, just unfortunately, broke. the Thames has broken it, which is fine because it's still a wonderful tiny piece of history and it made me a little less sad about the fact <laughs> that you found a rose farthing. So what's your favourite find? <laughs> well, my favourite find <laughs> is my beautiful Millifor trade bead, Phoenician trade bead. And again, we've spoken about the history of this, and it's almost impossible to age. I think it is one of the ones from the 16th century to the 18th century. It's not one of like the 1920s one. We have some, and um, I can show you some examples that we've got of like 1920s ones. And this is not that. It has been made, well, I've spoken about the history, but it's, it is beautiful. It was on my bucket list. I've, we've talked about um, the dark history be behind these beads because we have to remember, yes, it's a beautiful thing and it's old and it's holding a piece of history in your hand, but the history you're holding in your hand is dark. And, and this tiny piece of beautiful glasswork is a reminder of that history. There are some wonderful um, things online. When I was looking at the research for this, I could have just spoken for hours and hours, and I'm sure there's lots of, yeah, there's lots of resources where you can read all about it. You well, know, it's people, important. It's very, very important. Yeah, it's a very poignant, very poignant piece of history. So yeah, we'll leave some links in the description for some writing about these beads and their history, and there are some beautiful examples out there. And there are lots, yeah, there's lots to, I couldn't include it all because this video would have been like three hours long. But maybe if we find another one, we can talk even more about it. And talking about beads, I also found this beautiful little orange strawberry heart bead. And beads are very difficult to date because there are literally millions of examples from across all of history. So this could be, this could be from any any era it could it was be. on an old bit of the foreshore it is though. in a bit of the foreshore that's got lots of roman and lots of oh, this isn't a roman bead but it that piece of foreshore is very odd but obviously the thames has been there for ever so it could be <laughs> you know and that it's been in a city that has been used as like a big city for basically all of england's history so it could be from any age i it is old it's not by any chance a modern bead but i absolutely no idea if anyone recognizes it please let me That's know quite distinctive it, it is quite a distinctive bead and it is beautiful and it's got metal in the middle that's been like corroded in there and i can't get it out so yeah if anyone recognizes it please let us know but it's beautiful and it's one of my favorite colors and i've not found a bead like this on the foreshore before we only find tiny, tiny beads ones, on the foreshore yeah. until obviously those two <laughs> On the same piece, on the same bit of foreshore, I found this. Which I am pretty certain, we're pretty certain, is a Roman games piece. Mm. Because if you look at this picture, it looks exactly the same. It's exactly the same. And like we said, there is lots of Roman on that bit of foreshore. Like this tiny piece of Roman pot that I found, which is like a miniature version of the bigger one I found, which is upstairs. Um... <laughs> And again, this does have a fingerprint of the maker that dipped it in the slip. So another Roman fingerprint, which is crazy. So yeah, I think this is a bone Roman games piece. Because we find lots of bone discs. We've got lots of bone discs. Do you want me to get the bone? If you can reach, oh my gosh, they go long, quite high. Here's the one lot of bone rings. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, um... <laughs> These are all of our bone disc games counters. I think there might actually be some more. They might have fallen behind. I think like there that. are some more, but <laughs> these these could be all manner of things. So we've got um, a lot that have the baby bottle. This is a baby bottle one from the Victorian times that did unfortunately lead to a lot of infant deaths because of the way it was made underneath the concave that used to collect a lot of bacteria. So babies used to get quite ill and unfortunately pass away using these bottles. So they weren't used for that long. But you can tell that that's one of this. This one's one of those because it's slightly, like I said, and caved. But then we have lots that are just flat bone disc rings. So these could be 
counters like on like string or games we're not really sure and there's then, so many of them though isn't yeah there? there's yeah and mum found this tiny one which we think is that came possibly from the same, the same of the piece foreshore. of foreshore so we're thinking this is possibly roman because it just looks a lot older and it's well, it looks chunkier very similar to the other one small. doesn't it does look like yeah. the one that I found. Yeah, the bone is a lot darker than like this one, which we know is from Victorian times. And then we have some that are just counters and have no holes in. And so these one ones definitely. So these ones we think could be games pieces, and then like Mum says, this one, which is a bit more similar to the one I found, although not as old. This one came from a from the bottle dump, didn't it? So yeah, again probably. Victorian may be older, but yeah, it looks more like <laughs> this one <laughs> that I found. Because this one has the little indent, this one has a out dent. <laughs> so that's the back of it, that's the front. So yeah, that's the yeah, so this is also the back of this one. Yeah, the back and then the front. And this, this one turned, has the I think. Yeah, it yeah. And it has the uh like the decoration, the detailing on the front. So we think these ones are games pieces. And these ones could have been from teething rings, Maybe. although this one's yeah, very small. small. So they used bone for a lot. They did, it, yeah, because obviously you could, you could, it was easy to come by, it's and it was strong and sturdy. And yeah, every, yeah, they all they've all gone completely different colours. Like this one's incredibly dark. But yeah, we have a, a, a bone collection growing, and you you especially really enjoy finding bone pieces. But there's so many different things of what these could be. But this one. Definitely a Pretty counter. sure it's definitely a games counter from Roman times, so that over 2,000 years old, which is absolutely incredible. <laughs> this piece of glass, which I've already shown in the film a lot, it's layered, which I've never seen any glass like it. It's an, it's an unusual colour, it's got beautiful iridescence, and it's layered. Mm, it's just... like been made, it's obviously very, very old. The question is just... How old? How old. So if anyone knows, who knows about glass, please let us know, because it's not something we know that much no. about. We've not found anything like it. I found a buckle. We did find a buckle. But it still works. It still swings. It does, which is absolutely incredible. Again, this seems like quite an old buckle. It's kind of generic, though, isn't it? It's not really decorated, it's just... No. But it could be... Looks like a shoe buckle, possibly. It does, yeah, because it's sort of curved. But yeah, wonderful that it still works. That's absolutely amazing for being in the Thames for however long. Pins, loads of pins. Always absolutely love a pin, and obviously, like we said, we hadn't found any in months. And then I found a pin loop, so I could put them all in it. We'd, we've done we've done a video about the history of pins and their uses, but they're just beautiful, and you can see that they were handmade. Cause well, the big the... ones. We've both found a big one, didn't we? You can see it very clearly on those. Where's the other big one? You've covered it all in bone things. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I think it's possibly the biggest pin we've ever found. But yeah, you can really clearly see this one. This one could I be Tudor. I can even see it without my glasses. <laughs> yeah, that shows. <laughs> so yeah, this one could be Tudor. Hmm. It's huge. <clears throat> They're absolutely, yeah, we do love a pin. <laughs> There's a hair. Oh, no, sunny cat hair. Um, aglets. They found two shapes. Two shapes. <laughs> I found a shape too. I thought you said you didn't find a shape. Oh no, I found something which I thought was a shape and then yeah. it turned out not to be. They are definitely shapes. These are definitely shapes and one has been Thames gilded by the anaerobic mud. Aglets, shapes. Again, I think we've talked about these before, but yeah, they would have been used on the end of lace or clothing, like to stop fraying. Could be Tudor again. Could be Tudor again. We've found some really beautifully decorated ones before. These two, unfortunately, are plain, but still amazing. Letterpress. Typeface. See, it's funny because you call them letterpress and I call them typeface. I don't know which is the right answer. I think they're both the correct oh, answer. Well. I think it's just. <laughs> um, so yeah, we found five pieces of typeface, which is crazy. Crazy. Um, I found the letter B. I think it, I found a, a B and a T and eight times twenty-four. Would that have been for like a maths paper? <laughs> I don't know. 
<laughs> I don't know. It seems I've not. I've never found a. Um, actually, I have. I've once found a piece of typeface with a company on it, so S R and Co or something. But this is only the second piece I've ever found that has ooh, that has multiple lettering or numbers on it. So yeah, eight times twenty-four, which is quite exciting. I don't know the answer. I don't know. Like, no, Eight could. times twenty-four is quite a big sum. I'll put yeah. it on the bottom of the screen. <laughs> Mine are just both spaces. But do you know what? Weirdly, I found blank typeface before, but I've always just thought it's been broken or worn off. But you, yeah, told me on the day that obviously I've just never thought about it. But of course, they would need spaces. Yeah, they need spaces. Yeah. Yeah, which is incredible. I mm. didn't, I never thought about that. So yeah, there's these. Although they're plain, that's still quite exciting because yeah, they're space Spaces. marks, which is yeah, very very cool. Corset fasteners, always a good, always thing. good and really good. For Excellent angel wings. Excellent angel wings, great for craft. Boar's teeth. Boar, yep. Two. Boar's teeth. Could have come off Henry VIII's table. Could have come off Henry VIII's table. <laughs> pipes, clay pipes. This one is 17th century because it's the long ones. And then this one is earlier. It's like a fairy pipe, but... Slightly bigger. Massive. <laughs> yeah, this is a really lovely example. And it's been really... White, like it's bleached white yeah, by the because this was found on a part of the shore shore that's very like stony so obviously it's sort of been buffed and made beautiful and it's really smooth and it's got that chalky texture that quite often clay pipes from the Thames foreshore have so yeah and they've both been you can tell they've both been sort of buffed because the edge is snapped is clean and worn and lovely and very satisfying so yeah you don't, yeah, we only really find pipes this shape on the Thames, don't mm. we? Over it, all the other pipes we find are sort of Victorian. So, it's very exciting. And this mystery object. Uh -huh. I like a mystery object. It's like a moon. It doesn't look like it's broken. And it's got like a... No, it's not definitely not broken. And it's got like a latch or sort of like a hook on the back. I don't know what that is. If anybody has a... Again, the mystery item of this week. <laughs> Last week's mystery item turned out to be something very exciting, so who knows? Mm -hmm. Which leads us into our safety pin. Which, when I first saw it, I was, I was considering about what age it could be. But actually, these were invented in the 1800s. And you can tell just by the metal and the shape of it that this is an, older an old version, one. Because... Yeah. It's actually quite an exciting yeah. find, and yeah, I've not seen one. Does it still like go it. in? Or is that no, a bit scary? It's it? a bit scary because yeah. I don't want to break it. And all of our beautiful pottery for our pottery projects plates. and yeah. plates. A bit tinglays, some green ware, a bit slip ware, and all the iridescent glass as well. Yeah, which is the craft that I made this week, which is, I think it turned out really well. <laughs> you have to I, go and see. <laughs> But yeah, iridescent glass, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Love it. So yeah, Mum, there will be a craft at the end. We just have to say a massive thank you to everyone that likes, comments and subscribes. A massive thank you to our Patreons and our Ko-fi donors. Um, we do just have to say that if you want to go mudlarking on the Thames for sure, you do need a permit from the PLA, the Port of London Authority. Me and Mum both have of permits with very bad pictures of us on them. <laughs> We've got physical ones though, you can't get physical ones anymore. No, it is now online. So yeah, that's it, we hope you enjoyed. We're very excited to go back to the Thames soon. Yeah, we're yeah, very, very, very excited. Yeah. So yeah, we hope you enjoyed. And we will see you next Monday. So we hope you have a good rest of the week and we'll see you then. But stay for the craft. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to try and make a tea light holder with all my iridescent glass that I've collected because it's just beautiful. And we'll see how it goes. This is a bit of trial and error to be honest. We'll see. <laughs>
and we're just sitting here celebrating our rose farthing. And I think we said Tudor in the film, but it's Charles the First. first.